Good morning, everyone. Today is a sunny day, and thanks for coming. Um, welcome to my seminar. Learn about Condo One Most Recommended Condo Investment in 2015. I'm sure you guys already know that this is about Regent Park from the ads of the seminar. So what do you think about Regent Park? Is it old? Is it crappy? Well, you already found that it is actually changed a lot already. It is a fact that the original Regent Park was a failure. It was a big isolated area of social housing right in downtown Toronto. The city of Toronto recognized the failure in year 2000 and would like to erase everything that was done wrong. They have already started from scratch to rebuild a brand new healthy community for the entire 69 acre region park. All existing old buildings will be demolished. Some people are skeptical and have a lot of questions in their heads where they hear about this. And this is normal because not every great plan flies. However, when a great plan does fly, it brings a lot of amazing opportunities. I'm going to show you that Regent Park revitalization is a great plan that is about to take off. It is a great time to invest into it and catch all the growth potential before it is too late. So let's get started. Today, I'm going to first talk about why people invest in Toronto condo. Why people invest in Toronto over Vancouver? or any great city in the world. People invest in this city for three reasons. One, for personal use or for their kids. Two, for rental income. Three, for long-term appreciation. Real estate is about long-term investment without time limit. You have to hold it for a certain period of time and sell it when the harvest time comes. If you are buying a pre-construction and hoping to make some fast money by flipping it before completion with no plan or ability to close it, you are just gambling. I would suggest you don't buy. As, it is, as you may lose when you become more desperate to sell it at an under market value price. This is also not good for the condo market. I will then show you what is the price of different areas within downtown Toronto. Then I will give you the history of Regent Park and what is the revitalization is about. I have prepared a nine minute video for you to look at the changes in Regent Park. This nine minutes video took us about a week to produce. Next, we will look at how the resale market in Regent Park when comparing with other areas in Toronto. Then I will talk about why Regent Park Bartholomew may be one of the best condo investment in the city in 2015. Daniels has the passion to develop a mixed-use community with a lot of end users. The Bartholomew is the sixth condos in the Regent Park development to be completed in 2017. Buyers only need to pay 5% before final closing. Gradual payment is also available. It is something you never heard of for a brand new launch pre-construction condos. Typically, we will see that developer only taking 5% only at a, a point that they are desperate. When they are trying to sell out their whole building, when they are 99%, they want to sell out the last 10 units, yes, they will do 5%. Okay, otherwise they, they can't because their bank will not allow them to do so. In order to secure their uh, construction finance, they have to sell 70%, if not 80% in the coming days. Recently, you may see that uh, a lot of institutions 
is buying the whole tower as a rental building. It is called apartment, okay, high-end apartment, and it is coming along. You will, you will see more and more. Comparing to last year, we actually have about 40% more on their purpose-built rental building. Why? Because the in institutions are seeing that it is a great opportunity, so they don't want to lose that. Up to now, in the past 20 years, most of their uh, rent, uh, most of the condo rental is from uh, owners, condo owners. But the institution want to play a role in it. They they want to to take part in it, make some money. So they decided to to build a uh, rent uh, pu uh, uh, purpose-built rental building. And you will see that it is it is happening in most of the prime area, like the one Bloor West, and also a lot of areas as well. Last, I will talk about the purchase, purchasing procedure. There are only 189 units in the condos, and with the payment structure about most good units will be gone on the first signing date, which is next Saturday. Today, even if you want a unit, we can only put your reservation into our system. And by, next, by the coming Wednesday, we will know what unit you got and we will ask you whether you like this unit that you got. Okay, let's get started again here. Condo, a popular investment, why? With the interest rate sitting at record low, most people consider real estate as a very safe long-term investment. Historically, price always go up in long run. People need to park their savings somewhere they can trust instead of leaving the money in the saving account with less than 1% interest rate. We all want to make sure we maintain similar lifestyle and spending power as long as we live. Why people invest in real estate? Let's go back 30 years. Downtown Toronto we're selling at $60 per square foot 30 years ago. And today, we're sitting at $600 per square foot, which is 10 times. While I do not have a crystal ball to tell me if it will go up another 10 times in the next 30 years, I am certain that the price will be higher than today. Say today, you purchase a $300,000 condo. $300,000 and you put down 20% as down payment which is $60,000 with a closing cost of around $12,000 your total investment becomes $60,000 plus $12,000 is $72,000 assuming even zero appreciation by the time that you dispose it or by the, by the time that you paid off your mortgage Still, you have saved $300,000, which is a lot of money to save. Toronto is a big city with a lot of jobs. The GTA population is projected to increase by almost 3 million over the next 26 years. By 2041, the GTA will have a population of 9.4 million. What that means? That means same number as the entire population of the greater Vancouver area moved to Toronto in just 26 years. Everyone packed their, their stuff and come to Toronto in 26 years. It sounds insane, but it is happening. As the preparation for this population grow, Ontario government has implemented a program called Places to Grow back in 2006. Places to Grow is a program planned for growth and development in a way that supports economic prosperity, protects the environment, and helps communities achieve a high quality of life across the province. Through Places to Grow, Ontario government regional growth plan that guide government investment and policies. In simple words, the region must grow up, not out. The result has been more high-rise development and less traditional low-rise development. 
as less and less low rise have been built since the places to grow program roll out the low rise prices is keep going up and up and up to a point that condo living may be the only viable and affordable solution for many people Toronto is a world class city the fourth largest city in North America after Mexico New York and LA Toronto also has the second largest financial district we have about 350,000 people working in the financial district by 2017 the number of people working in the financial district will exceed London not the London Ontario is the British on British London today okay however when we are however we are pretty behind in terms of the transportation system today it is typical for a person to spend three hours round trip if he lived in Richmond Hill and worked in downtown this is the major reason why people need to live and work in downtown especially the Y generation who born after 1980s the sales price and rent combination makes your investment self-sustaining it's very important why people pick Toronto because Toronto has this character we can own a piece of condo and yet it is self-sustaining what does it mean by self-sustaining self-sustaining means the rents that you collect is more than the carrying cost or expense you need to pay what is your income the monthly income is the rents that you collect this is your sole income and your monthly expenses including mortgage payment mortgage payment including the principal plus interest remember the principal goes into your asset the condo fee and the property tax I call it TMI so it's mortgage condo fee and mortgage payment condo fee and the property taxes okay so self-sustaining really means that if you if, you're, if the rent you collect is enough to pay all your monthly expense then your investment is self-sustaining which is a positive cash flow if you have read the, uh, the rich dad poor dad book you will see here uh, we have been asked how many properties can we own if we, if, if we are carrying a negative negative cash flow property zero okay let's compare three different places great cities in Toronto great cities in the world Toronto versus Vancouver 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 versus Hong Kong Toronto Toronto is undergoing a condo boom to satisfy the increase in population developers has no choice because of the places to grow because of the places to grow we have to grow up not out the city of Toronto aware that we we have so much infrastructure and we have so many people and if we keep going out of the city it is not going to help we don't have enough money to put all the infrastructure the schools planting trees and everything and the levies will be really high in Toronto you can get a zero to five years condo at 200,000 to 300,000 in downtown Toronto versus in Vancouver limited number of new condos in downtown Vancouver mostly very high-end in the million dollars range a budget of 200,000 to 300,000 is almost impossible to buy any condo in downtown Hong Kong crazy expensive will be interesting to see how much rent you can collect okay let's take a look here we see their sales price of Toronto Vancouver versus Hong Kong and the monthly rent and then the initial investment that you need and mortgage and condo fee property tax and your total expense and at the end you will see the monthly cash okay let's go through it quickly first you will see that living in downtown Toronto is the most affordable across these three great cities in Toronto 
the property price to monthly rent ratio is about 0.54%. What does that mean? Whatever you buy, okay, I'm, I, I, uh, I'm not David, David Copperfield, but whatever you bought before, okay, if you bought a unit at $300,000 before, multiply, multiply it by 0.5%. That is what the rent should be. Doesn't matter whether it is in North York or in downtown Toronto or in Hamilton or wherever. If it is less than 0.5%, that is something that you should not consider in Toronto. That means if I own a piece of property in North York, $300,000, two bedroom, I should be able to collect a rent of $1,500. Versus in downtown, the $300,000 could be just a four hundred square feet studio, still you need to collect 1500 This is your cost. You, you want to live on, you, you want to be able under positive cash flow quadrant. The property price to monthly rent ratio in uh, other area like Vancouver is about 0 0.35. In Hong Kong, 0.1%. People cannot rely on their the rent to cover all the carrying costs. There's no way to do it. They are just hoping to get appreciation by the time that they dispose the unit. So they are more like gambling. Versus in Toronto, you enjoy two things. First, when you own the property, you're actually making income from the rent. It is a positive cash flow. Even you see that we only have $88.75 monthly cash. What does that mean? Does that mean we're only making $88? No, because in the mortgage, $961, half of that is paid towards your principal. So you are saving the, that amount, the mortgage amount divided by two plus the monthly cash flow. So a year, you, you, can, you can save $6,000. And yes, someone would say that, well, renting out a place could be a hassle to a lot of people. Well, look at what you're doing, what, what, look at how hard we're working today. Only spending a day or two a year to manage your own rental property, that's nothing. To, to make that $7,000 or $10,000 a year, that's worth every penny, every single minute minutes of time. You can see that the rent you are collecting is covering all the expenses, which including paying your mortgage principal. Okay, let's do another comparison. People always compare investing in condos versus investing in stock market, GIC, or mutual fund. Let's say we have about $65,000. Investing in condos versus investing in some, some GIC and mutual fund. With high risk mutual fund, 8% per year. For 25 years, you got 8%, which is pretty good. I don't see this happen often. And in truth, if you uh, go to Google and search for how many people are making money in the stock market, less than 15%. If you are making money from the stock market, you are the 15%. Congratulations. Versus in there, okay, so uh, let's go through their GIC mutual fund. Initial investment, $65,000. I put 30000 in the GIC for 1.5% because maybe I'm older, I need to pay safe, I cannot dump everything into the high-risk mutual fund. And on the high risk mutual fund, I put $35,000. After 25 years, which is a tw uh, mortgage lifetime, okay, uh, you got 43,000 from GIC, 256,000 altogether for here. And versus condos, you may get about the same. You will see that the mortgage, seeing that the 278,000 dollars and 900 because you have been fully paid off in 25 years. And we are assuming zero appreciation for 25 years here. Okay, still your, in, your investment of 65,000 becomes a full flat of condos, 278,900 with, uh, with way less risk. And also assuming that there the rent is always 1500 like the, I said, 0.5% around, okay, for the next 25 years. Still, at the end of 25 years, 
when you retire, you still have a steady income of 1500 minus the condo fee, minus the property tax. Could be a good $800 just right from one flat of condos. That's why you see a lot of people that they are, they are using condos as a retirement, part of their retirement, retirement plan. If they own three to four condos, let's say, three condos by the time that they retire, they can actually don't need to rely on their government. They actually can get over $3,000 for four thousand dollars easily from just the rental income, not including when they dispose the that dispose the unit. I don't even need to dispose the unit. For every single unit, I actually put put down around seventy thousand dollars, let's say, and then I let it run for twenty five years. And at the end, I can have a really good life to 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 live the same lifestyle as what I am right now. Now, let's take a look at the downtown. What options do we have? First, in the city of Toronto, the most expensive area is the Yorkville. Most of the units in the Yorkville is in average is $927. Second, is the Young and Wellesley. Young and Wellesley is, is, is a little bit less. It is just about uh, 200 meters from Bloor and it is $680. Young in college, 700 per square foot. University Street, 720. That's the average. Entertainment District is 660. A lot of people do not know where the Entertainment District is. It is actually bounded by the university to the Spadiner, and on the north, from Queen to King. And City Place, it is right at the Lakeshore, Front Street, and the Spadiner. The price is $588 per square foot. Next, we take a look at the Church Street. In that area, it is about $640 per square foot, average. Regent Park. It is about $550 per square foot. It will be interesting to see that how the growth in the last five years in all these areas. Now, take a look at the Region Park revitalization. Let's talk about the history of Region Park. Region Park has a history dated back to 1948 and it was Canada's oldest and largest social housing community. One of the major reasons why it was a failure was because the whole community only had social housing and nothing else. By nothing else, I mean really we have no jobs, no retail, no commercial, no nothing, and we actually have only residential. There are limited public transportation only small roads, isolated from the downtown core. Eventually, this area became very isolated from the downtown core, even though it is physically very close to it. As a result, the region park was marked as Toronto's poor neighborhood. The vision. So how are we going to fix this? First, we need a mixture of people with different backgrounds, cultures, and income levels. In some countries, there is a distinct line drawn between rich and poor people, and they stay away from each other. In Canada, our culture is not like that. We are taught to say no to discrimination. I mean, in the end, does poor people mean bad people? I don't think so. I think a healthy community should have a mix of different people, a mix of different people, and this is also what the city of Toronto is going to promote. TCHC Toronto Community Housing is going to participate in building a new and revitalizing old neighborhood in downtown Toronto. For example, besides Regent Park, there is a lot of action in rebuilding the waterfront downtown Toronto. There will be million dollars condos having nice views into the lake, 
but at the same time, there will also be Toronto community housing rental buildings. The overall goal is to revitalize the older part of downtown Toronto and make nice community for everyone to enjoy. Just by this topic, I'm going to ha I may have another seminar talking about revitalization in the future. And I will talk about also the purpose-built rental building. How is it going to affect our, our condos market? Another crucial factor to make the new region park a success is the developer. We need a trustable developer to execute the plan because in the end, a great plan not executed is pretty much useless. Daniels Corporation is chosen to be the developer's partner with Toronto Community Housing to revitalize region park community. With Daniels being the top developer in Toronto, high quality finishes and on timely delivery and are just the basis. basics. You are going to see that Daniels has put a lot of care and thought into the building and the whole neighborhood. Okay, let's see it in action. station. Phase two started with the paint box condos. A lot of the condo came with the paint box bistro, which is the first restaurant in the area. We also have the Daniel Spectrum, which is the art and cultural hub in the neighborhood. It houses the Regent Park School of Music and also the Regent Park Film Festival which is Toronto's only free film festival. The third floor is a venue for many events such as fashion shows, art galleries and all that. The Daniels Metro and the Port Center are the two main hubs that attract people all over Toronto to come to Regent Park now.
the aquatic center has been opened for about three years. This is the only new pool in the city of Toronto for the past 25 years. There are three pools in the aquatic center. Everything is free, including the swimming lessons. The six-acre community park was just opened last summer. There's the off-leash dog park, greenhouse, community open, gardening plots. The children's playgrounds are placed away from the street. Phase two also features the Toronto Bird Center. There are only two bird centers in Canada, one in Ottawa, and the other one is here in Region Park. There will also be a dentist office here. This brings us to the latest condo addition to the Region Park, the one park place north and south towers. Shoppers Drug Mart will be opening on the ground floor very soon and we are waiting for more retailers to come in. I love these two buildings and I have units in both. Let's hear the One Park Place resident talking about Regent Park. Hello, I'm Catherine, and I'm here in Regent Park. Thank you for being here. And we do have a Regent Park to see that all the Regent Park is here in the city of the Taipo. But this one is here. Regent Park is here in the city of the Taipo. And this one is here in the city of the Taipo. It's a very good place to see the city of the Taipo. So, the city of the Taipo is here in the city of the Taipo. 我覺得呢度咧交通唔方便，我本身係單車翻工，咁我由以前喺屋企住咧，換衫嗰啲係咪坐火車翻工？誒、呃，佢哋而家都嚟到呢邊拍咧，我知道呢邊都有啲外來坐街車翻工咧，誒、呃、方便，亦都慳翻咗五零蚊嘅時間嘅增值。誒、呃，我有誒、呃、另外一個親戚誒、呃、做投資用途嘅，誒、呃、下半年先收樓，但係唔知呢幾日之前已經收到一個 offer， 係由租客嚟做嘅。我覺得。Hi, I'm Yana. I live in Regent Park. I love it here. It's so new and it takes me 10 minutes to get to work. Hi, I'm Claire and I'm a year one student at Warrington. I previously lived in Marco and have to spend three hours to get to school, but now I live in Regent Park and I only have to spend 30 minutes to get to school. Behind the One Park Place in South Tower is the Nelson Mandela Park Public School. The school underwent a major renovation. Everything inside is renewed, and it becomes a high technology school that can accommodate more students. The community center beside the school will be opening soon this summer. It will have a running track, rock climbing wall, gym, garden plots, and so on. The Regional Park Boulevard is a pedestrian-friendly walkway. It is strategically placed so that students from the school can come up to the park safely. It is also an area designed for tennis metro. Whenever there is an event going on, people just spill out to the area. These past summer, many events were held at the boulevard such as farmers markets, arts and crafts fair, wood truck festival, spicy wing festival. Now, let's look at the last piece of phase two, the Bartholomew condo and towns. The Bartholomew is located closer to Parliament and Dundas. There are streetcar stops right at the intersection. The project consists of a 13-story condo building and 30 townhomes. It is the first time we are selling a condo in Region Park before construction starts. That means you can enjoy a 5% home deposit for two years until the project completes in the summer of 2017. The Bartholomew will complete the phase two of the revitalization. The construction for phase three will soon start. As you can see, all the old apartment buildings have been demolished there will be a lot of exciting developments. By now, I'm sure you have already realized that Region Park Revitalization is more than just a model or a vision. It is a plan put into action. With its physical location so close to the downtown core and yet with a North York price tag, I have 
full confidence that my units in Regent Park will enjoy very nice appreciation. If you have never thought about investing in Regent Park, think seriously now before it is too late. Now the background is golden. This is really a different project. In downtown Toronto, most of the developers are actually putting up buildings one by one, site by site. This is actually a master development project. When I say master development, it's actually uh, pretty much the developer is working with their city and their architecture to make sure that no buildings are blocking with each other. We're trying our best not to do so, at least. So you will see that a uh, community must have a, a bank, must have grocery shopping, must have a coffee shop, uh, and a lot more. And so far we have created about 900 jobs within the region park versus zero before. Okay, let's take a look at the plan by the number. The project start date of the entire region park was 2005. So it is already 10 years. It is anticipated project length of 15 to 20 years. Total size of the region park is 69. This is what I call master development. Master development is really like a bunch of buildings, not just one building, so that they, they plan in advance and, and not trying to, to build an extremely tall building blocking the, the next building be, besides you, this kind of development, right? So uh, this, this is very special and you don't see it happening all, uh, uh, a lot. The, we, we see Daniels doing this now, and back then in 1999, they are actually doing their, the Daniels, uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, the Shepherd and Bayview area. You can see that most of the buildings are being built by Daniels. That was another ma uh, major master plan development, which they spent about 15 years to do it. Okay, this, the entire region park has about 5,400 units planned. Rental units, 2,200. The old region park population was only 7,500. And the new region park planned it to be 25,000. And in truth, we already exceeded the original region park population right now. The old region park employment, zero. It is basically an area for low-income people to live. New region park employment is 1,800 expected. Right now, we are at 900. And I don't know what, whether you know it, uh, the shop is going to open within two weeks. And, and also, the St. Michael Hospital Clinics is, has booked about uh, 20,000 square feet in, in the region park. And they're going to open within just a few months' time. This is the map showing the different phases. And you can see that the phase one on the top left corner is, has been completed. And now we are wrapping up the largest portion, which is the phase two. Next will be phase three, four, and five. And we, the Bartholomew will be the last building in phase two and yet closest to the Regional Park Boulevard, which is the center of the entire project. Let's take a look at their sales data in the West End Toronto downtown, which is around Spadina and front area. A one plus 10, you can see that it's about 650 square feet. The sold price, the same unit. Okay, I have to emphasize that. This, we are talking about the same unit, exactly the same unit on this exact floor, so exactly the same. So in 2013, someone bought it at $358,000. And in 2015, he sold it at $375,000. So he, the, uh, he made about 4.75% and the percentage, in, incre percentage increase per year is about 2.37%. And I'm not going to go through every single case, but on average you will see that it is about 2% uh, here for somewhere 
for a building or a bunch of units within the same neighborhood, Spadina and Front Street. And next, we are going to take a look at Regent Park, one code, the, the, the oldest building in Regent Park. And you can see that for a two bedroom plus media, 816, 816 square feet unit, in 2010, someone bought it as 361,400. And um, in 2013, he sold it as 3, 395,000, and an increase of 9.3% for the three years. So its average is about 3%. The next one is actually a two bedroom, 756 square feet. And you can see that this is an interesting one. Uh, he bought it in 2010, $334,000. And then he, someone sold it and buy it, and someone bought it, right, and 370,000, and then in 2012, just two years, the price has been went up so fast. It, is, it has an increase of 9.55% per year. On average, we have about 3% in Regent Park. This is another building in Regent Park, the 25 code, the second oldest building. And you will see that it is about 3% as well. It's very hard to control, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next, I want to show you this one. This is actually the paint box condos. This show you a studio of 392 square feet sold in 2015 at $245,000. The price per square foot is about 625 and the rent is 1295. And again, this is within my 0.5% ratio. The one bedroom, 548,000 548 square feet, sold at $308,000. And the, and the price per square foot is 562, and the rent is 1550. The one plus stand is actually the most popular unit in Region Park. A lot of people just love one plus stand. The reason being that is because the one plus stand, the den inside, uh, the den of the one plus stand of the region park design is very, very functional. People can put a, a uh, sofa bed inside as a second bathroom if, they, if needed. So I would highly recommend people to focus on the one plus stand for this project. And you can see that you can collect a rent of 1750. That's actually including a parking too, because most of their condos in downtown, we are charging about 55000 if not $70,000 for a parking, not including a maintenance fee of about $100 per month. In Regent Park, for during this promotion, we are selling their, con uh, selling their the parking with locker at 15800 only. Very special. So if you have a car, you don't really have a choice. If you want to have a space and you want to park your car, you, have, you want to own a car, right? In, right at the center of the Tantana Toronto may not be their viable solution. Because just the unit itself is $700. 700, if, if you want a 600 square feet unit, it's 420,000. Plus the parking of around 55,000, that is about $480,000 versus here is about $350,000. So really, this is a really viable choice for people. And because of that, we don't really need to, to make a huge sales event for, for Daniel's Bartholomew, because it just sells itself. And you never see anyone that putting up a big sign or whoever, big uh, brokerage is trying to sell it, because you're rarely able to get units. But good thing is, we, ha we are blessed today. We have Daniel's people here, Jenny here. It's my honor to have her here. So um, we're actually able to put in reservation. Reservation, what does that mean? Reservation really means that we, 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 we give her their, their, their reservation request, and by Wednesday, we will announce who get what on Wednesday. And by next Saturday, it's, it's the one day signing. Okay, I'm pretty sure that most of the good unit will be sold by that time, okay, on just one day. If you come, you will see that people are just just uh, lining up with the, uh, with the appointment being booked already. Next, 
I want to talk about uh, the rental because when we are talking about investment, the most important thing is I want you guys to, 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 to own it for, for a certain period of time. This is real estate. So you must be able to hold it on your hand. If you have time limit, don't buy real estate. So you will see that most of the unit, the number of transactions are like um, around, the average is about uh, 30 days on average. Within a month, these units will be rented out. Rental is pretty quick here, especially when the rent is less than 1750. The number of days on the market is just around 24 days. When the rent gets more expensive, it takes about one month to rent out a unit. This is normal, and this is almost the norm in Toronto. The norm in Toronto is about 33 days. So if, if you beat 33 days, that is good. And one thing that I want to, uh, to tell you guys is, even though 2014 we are flooded with, with a condos completion, okay? 2014 marked their, their most number of units being completed in the history. And 2015, 16, and 17 is not even comparable. So even so, our vacancy rate didn't go up. It actually only 1.3%. That means we have a lot more people looking for rental now because they may not be able to afford or they really need to live in downtown and they may be hopping on their jobs and they cannot fix their, 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 their home at that point. I have recently rented, about, rented out 30 units in the One Park Place South Tower. I saw a lot of happy investors because they found that, okay, within two weeks, I don't even need to put it on the MLS. So you won't see any, any uh, most of my listing on the MLS. In truth, it may not even be uh, possible to put it on the MLS. I actually have my own group of people doing the rental uh, management. In condo, in condo One Real Estate, Broker, is this brokerage, we have different division. We have the legal division. Legal division is the one that's helping you to rebuild the, the, the contract after you, you bought a, uh, a place, right? So we help you to rebuild it and zero, zero, uh, zero cost for you. And we have the mortgage division. And by the time that we do the closing, let's say for the one-part place South Tower, we actually have 35 units closing at the same time. CIBC is the one that are offering us a 35 units mortgage. It is about, it is about uh, $10 million mortgage for, for, for CIBC. So they gave us a special rate, staff rate, 2.09%, which is unbeatable. You can't even ask anyone outside to give you this if it's not a bulk deal. So we, give, we offer you bulk deal as well. This is very important. So it, it saves you hassle. Buying a, an investment is easy. It's just the first step. But what the following steps, you need a brokerage. You don't need one single agent. One agent cannot help you all the everything. You need a company, a brokerage to help you. It is quite an accomplishment for me to see so many happy landlords and tenants in the building. And in truth, I am the board of director of the One Park Place North Tower. I'm the president of that building. So I know top down in that area. Now, let's take a look at the top eight reason to invest in Region Park. Number one, the Region Park is physically very close to the downtown core. The streetcar 505 is running along the street every five minutes, if not three minutes. You are simply a five-minute streetcar ride from the Ryerson University, Eaton Center, and the Financial District. It is rare. The Dundas Street, Dundas Street actually is the one that dissecting the, the downtown Toronto. With the Dundas Street, we actually going through the, re, the uh, from the Region Park, just five minutes, you go to the Ryerson University after five, uh, five stops of the streetcar. The six stops will be the Eaton Center. The seventh one will be the Bay and Dundas, the financial district. And the seventh stop will go to the university where the four other hospitals are and also 
uh, many other government buildings. Toronto is the main hub for hospital, so it is the best within the Canada. We have SickKids, we have Mount Sinai, we have the St. Michael, we have a lot of facilities here. A lot of st staff want to practice in Toronto, in truth. Remember from the residence testimonial from the video, the short commute time is a top reason for them to choose Regent Park. If you drive, you're just right by the Don Valley Parkway entrance and you can avoid all traffic congestion within the downtown core. Compared to the, to the West End, we actually have a lot less congestion. In the coming days, you will, you will see a lot more uh, developments in the East End of Toronto. because of the Don Valley Parkway. And surrounding Regent Park, we have all the major car dealership. We have Lexus, we have Mercedes, we have Porsche, you name it, Honda, whatever. They all surrounding us because they know that the market is right there. They are not stupid. They know where to put their, their dealership. Number two. Region Park may be the most affordable investment. Why? Because of the deposit structure. 5% only before the final closing. That means for a $300,000 for for unit, you only need to pay 15000 before final closing. It is unseen. You, you, you can't find it anywhere else for a first launch. It may be happening at the end of the project or when, when, when developer is desperate to see the 70% mark when they are selling, when they need uh, around 30 units to sell, they can do that, but not at the very beginning of a launch. This is rare. The reason be being that is Daniels and DACHC really want to attract end users to live in this area, not just investors, So, which is good. We have a well-balanced market here. Typically in downtown Toronto, most of the condos is 70% to investors. Then people would say that why a lot of investors? Because well, without these 70% investors, you can't even start building. No one is going to buy a condo four or five years down the road, planning that they're going to live in there, rarely. So most of them are investors. Without them, the, the developer are not able to get any construction finance, and as a result, it won't be built. Whenever you, we see any crane in their downtown Toronto, it actually means that it has sold at least 70%. In the coming days, banks will be, more, will, will be tighten the their, their structure. They may say 80% from now on, depending on their developers. Daniels has their own money, big pocket. They can start building with, even without anyone buying it. In the past, most of the Daniels Region Park buildings, they actually start building before even start selling. They, are, they just start selling 12 months before the completion. So this is rare. And the good location is number one. Very affordable investment deposit structure is very important too. Regent Park is in downtown, but with a North York price tag. Why I'm saying that? Because recently we are all focusing on Connect condos, Seoul condos, Yorkdale condos. They are all TCHC developer, developments, if you don't know that. They are very successful. A lot of them are, have been sold out already. If you want to get a unit in Connect condos, Seoul condos, or, or even Yorkdale condos, very, very hard. They're all TCHC uh, related projects. It is most affordable investment you can find in downtown Toronto. Plus, Dan News is offering a unique 5% only gradual deposit payment plan. What is the gradual deposit payment plan? You only need to pay 4,000 on signing, and you just have to pay 1,000 per month to save up your total 5% deposit. That means if you are buying a $300,000 unit with a $4,000 down payment, you are paying $1,000 more for 11, for 11 months to save up your 15,000 total deposit. So it is very easy for you to save money and at the same time investing in downtown Toronto. $550 per square foot in downtown Toronto is rare. I won't say it never happened, it is really rare. And especially with a community that's full with uh, um, 
facilities like the swimming pools, the six acre park, and also the Daniel Spectrum, the paint box bistro, the RBC, whatever, right? It, it, it is a community. Daniel's is building a community, a master plan development community. It is not building a condo. This is important to know. Number three, you will see later on the incentive page that we are offering an amazing parking and locker combo for only $15,800 for any unit that's bigger than 595 square foot. This is totally unbeatable when you compare this with 55,000 for a parking space in the core downtown area. Next, if you are looking for a place to live, you need bigger space. With 700 square per square foot in the major Yang and Dundas area, you're now paying 550 and you are just minutes away from them. And yet you can use the extra money to buy a bigger unit. So it is really family oriented area. And this could be the best choice in the $500 per square foot range. You will never hear 400 something square foot in, in the coming future, never. Ex unless it is really uh, uh, far away from the downtown core or very ghetto area or whatever. 500 is, is really rare. And when you compare this to, uh, to Yorkdale, Connect condos or Seoul condos, they are about the same price. So right now we are buying something that's in the, right in the downtown Toronto. I talk about that, the Fairfield Mall and Yorkdale condos are all TCHC related developments. And in truth, you might don't even know, a lot of buildings these days, we ha actually have to put in TCHC elements in order to, to, to fulfill what the city of Toronto is asking for. Number seven is the top developer, Daniels. Buy with confidence, no hidden cost. That means on closing, people typically seeing like a, a $10,000 levies, a development charge and education and connection fees. Here in Daniels, this particular project, we are offering 3,800 cap. So at most you are paying 3,800, including connection charge and levies and everything. And the park levies. And we are buying the future. Future of downtown development will be the east side. Now, let's look at the Bartholomew in specific. The building height is 13 story. Number of units around 170. Tentative occupancy is January 2017. Market condo units deposit structure is $4,000 uh, with agreement, $1,000 per month until 5% of the purchase price is reached. Maintenance fee is 51 cents per square foot. That's including heat, air conditioning, hot water, and cold water, which is pretty much everything except the hydro, which is around $50 for one bedroom or $80 for two bedrooms. What is the incentive today? The parking, 15,800. For those that who are not eligible to buy a parking plus locker, you have a free locker of different size. No hidden cost, no hidden, hidden cost. Final closing cost kept at 3,800. That is very important. That will make your closing bound up within 10,000. So basically, what is the close, closing cost? The closing cost of any property is their development charge. Number two is their land transfer tax. Number three is the legal cost about $1,000. And number four is the Terion. Terion is the one that runs you your, is to protect your investment. They protect you from the time that you sign the contract. All your deposit goes into a account that's being governed by them. So the developer cannot touch it until they do the final co closing. So it is not their interest to delay the project unless they really have to. Maybe they're not able to sell or, or maybe there's some strike happening. Okay, what is their 
procedure today. Okay, before I talk about the process procedure, I would like to introduce our sales team here. Okay, we have Christine Lau over there. We have Michael Ho. We have Vassal Shah. They are all here today to answer all the questions you may have. Jenny is the sales representative from Developer Daniels. It is truly our honor to have her join us today. Lawrence Chen from CIBC is also here to answer any question you may have. Oh, you're here now. Okay. And it is truly my honor to have my whole team here helping me out here. They are all professional. Without them, I, I cannot do anything here. I'm blessed today. As the demand for Bartholomew is extremely high, we may not be able to accommodate everybody's first choice unit. So please, put in three choices in the re reservation form. We will let you know the exact unit you get allocated by Wednesday. I will call you, developer may call you. We'll see whether you can get anything. We only have 159 units. And I, I know that a lot of people are fighting for it because it is in downtown core. And in the past six months, tell you what, there's no downtown development. You, you never see any downtown sales in the last six months, except T House 2. That is a second phase only. There's no brand new project being rolled out, so people are hungry for new projects, really hungry. The signing of the agreement will then be on Saturday, May 9, 2015. By Wednesday, we will notify you which unit you get, and then we will ask you what time you want to come in with the checks. Again, we don't need a big check from you. We only need one single 4,000 check. And the $1,000 checks per month can be provided later on. Or at the, on the same day if you want. Today, I have pre-selected some great layout amount all the plans, which you can find at the back of the room now. Please take a look at them and ask our team know any question you may have. We have five tables here. We separate it into a studio, one bedroom, one plus ten, and two bedroom. I have pre-selected all the floor plans and they will be on the table. You can ask the person at the table. And if you have any question, I'm around too. Now, let my team distribute all the, all the brochures to you now. And you can sit right there, and then I'm, I, I'm going to give you my business card, a special business card, so that you will get special treatment in the future. 